Hey you guys, welcome to my video. Today we're going to be talking about LS. We're going to make sure that you know everything about LS um, before you leave here or a good amount of knowledge about LS so you feel comfortable using it in the real world environment and stuff like that. So let's get down to it, right? So LS, if you just type in LS, it's going to list all the files in your directory. You have uh, directories, you have files and everything like that. So the next one is ls-l. This will give you a long listing. This will just like list a file in a long format. It gives you a lot more details. Uh, if you see this little hyphen, it just means the regular file. The D means the directory. If you see a L, it means a link. And if you see a um, S as a socket. And if you also see a um, N, it means a network file. The next three is for the owner. This is the permissions for the file. It's read, write, no execute perm permission for the owner and then the middle three is for the group doesn't have any permissions the last three is for the uh, other so anybody else they don't have permissions either alright so this gives you the number of links so in this example one indicates only one link to this file alright so the third field specifies the owner of the file in this example the file is owned by the username root and then the fourth field over here specifies a group of the file. <clears throat> so basically the file belongs to the root group. All right. So the next one basically is the size in bytes. So in this example, it specifies 7,539 bytes. All right. And then the next one, the sex field, the date and time last modification of the file. So it tells you the last time, time that it was modified. And then the last one is the name of the file. All right, so the next one is dash LH because this is <clears throat> in bytes. So you might not understand the byte format. So when you type in H with long listing, so you're listing it long and then you're converting these numbers into a human readable format. So this just means kilobytes. If you see a M, it's megabyte. And if you see a capital G, it's a gigabyte. So this is good to decipher if you don't know what the bytes are. Most people don't even know. So it doesn't really matter. You always use LA, LH. To understand it so the next one will give you information about a directory right so let's say if you type in LD right for the ETC directory so you can type in anything here right um, any directory that you want to get you want to list files in right so this is giving you information about this directory of ETC um, and just to let you know when you use LS you don't have to use it on the file you're in you can use LS to whatever ever ever anything you want so you can do ls dash dev. So when you type in ls, you're just saying, okay, I want to. So if you're doing this ls just by itself, it's gonna look at the actual current directory that you're in. But when you type in ls, you can actually put a location of where you want to list the files in. So that's pretty cool. So if you want to do ls, you can do ls slash bin. It'll give you all the files inside the bin folder. So you don't have to actually be there to actually list the files. Um, if you guys were just wondering. All right, so the next one we're going to do um, is called ls-lt. The reason I'm doing t, so you get more details about the file, long listing, and the t just tells you the last time it was modified. So it'll tell you the one that was modified first was this one, was June 6, which was actually today, and then DBA stuff is the next one, and then you have um, Ansible, and then you have the very last one, which is uh, June 18, 2019. So this is the last file that was modified, and this is the first, um, or the, f the newest one that was modified, correct? So if you do dash LTR, so long listing, last time it was modified, and, and it's in, in reverse order. So this gives you the reverse order of the files. So basically, this is the same thing as this, it just reversed. So if I do LS dash R, I'll reverse the order. If I do LS, see? Anacondas here and then originals here. So it just reverses it. That's what dash R just basically means. All right. So let's go to the next command. The next command is um, ls dash um, I. So this just gives you the I know number. So I know number is basically a number that's basically linked to this file. Um, so each file has a different I know number. If it's a hard link, they both have the same I know number, meaning that if you modify one, the other one will be modified. Um, we'll do another video on that for you guys so I can kind of get deeper in it and kind of explain it to you guys so you, it won't be as confusing. If I do ls-n, basically the n just tells you like the the user ID and the group ID. So you see this one, the actually, um, so every user has a user ID that's assigned to it. 
and every group has a group ID that's assigned to it, right? So in this case, the user ID is zero for a root, and the group is zero because obviously root is root, and it's zero for that one too. If it was a regular user, it would be like 1001 for Bob, right? And then um, for the group that is in, it will have its own unique uh, group ID. So that's handy if you guys are interested in that, and I'll make another video for that also for you guys. So when I do ls, um, sometimes it can get a little confusing because you don't know if this is the directory because, you know, the colors, um, they mean different things in different distros. And especially if you modify your color on your command line, it might kind of like disrupt the coloring scheme possibly. All right. So if you do ls-f, this gives you a little bit more information. So f just gives you special characters. So it's like more visually like it's visual classification of files with special characters. So it gives you a visual classification of what the file is. If there's nothing on it, it's just a regular file, like a text file, you know, basically. Um, if you see that slash, it means that this is the directory. If you see that little star, it means that it's an executable. So if I do ls dash bin, but I forgot to put that f there, <laughs> capital F. So it's telling me that um, the, the bin is actually a link. So if I go to etc, you see all these files are links. So uh, if you see that uh, little um, at sign, it means the link. If you see the little slash, it means the directory. If you don't see anything, it's the file itself. So um, it's pretty cool if you guys want to see the difference of what's a directory, what's a regular file, and what's a link. Um, and like I said, if you see that... Uh, see the little star it means it's the executable something that can be execu um, executed right um, as you can see these link files sometimes you don't know where it goes at you guys could use ls dash lh capital h but we're gonna actually use it in the etc folder okay so um, when you use ls dash capital h remember the small h is for human readable that's like to change this into like actual like uh, readable format so if I did h lowercase h to change the um, bytes into like something that I can read kilobytes megabytes and um, gigabytes and then if I do a capital H which basically translates the um, link and it gives you an arrow to where it's actually linking to right and if I do L for long listing right and then ETC you see it changes the um, it changing this H to human readable and then the capital H will give you the link of where it's actually going and then the L will give you the actual long listing. And just to let you know, you can mix them up however you want to. They all stack on top of each other. So if I took that capital H out and I did it again, right? Well, in this instance, it's telling you, but you, it's already, I guess it's already uh, formatted that way. But um, usually with the capital H, it gives you more information about the actual link, uh, where the link goes. So it usually gives you more um, information on that, um, but it looks like it's already uh, set up on that um, that instance, right? All right, um, and that's pretty much it, you guys. I mean, I don't really have that much. Uh, actually, I have one, actually, last one. <laughs> so we can do ls dash uh, capital R, and this recursively goes inside of every file. So um, when I'm doing ls on this one, you see this is the directory. So when I do ls dash capital R, it goes inside of every folder inside the Ansible uh, folder. So bin, change logs. Um, so you got, uh, yeah, so bin, change logs, uh, contrib, docs. So it goes in all of these directories, and every single file, it displays what's in there. So if this has two directories, it will go in those two directories and display everything in the files. So that's why it was a lot of, like, a lot of uh, data. That's all the folders and files in there, and it just kind of crawls everything, kind of like a web crawler um, or anything like that. All right, you guys. Thank you every, very much. You guys have a great day. Um, please uh, subscribe, and please leave a comment, and you guys have a great day. Um, please follow my series. I'm going to be uh, working on more of these uh, videos and everything uh, of actual like commands and kind of going deeper into the commands. All right. Thank you, and have a good day.